and welcome to um, one of our buffer overflow tutorials and today I'm going to be demonstrating in this tutorial the exploitation technique of structure exception handler overwrite and in this presentation we've got um, a Kali Linux machine and a Windows 7 machine and in order to demonstrate this um, exploit I'm going to be using the DVD um, X Player 5.5 Professional. This application is actually <coughs> vulnerable to um, an SCH overwrite buffer overflow exploit. So just a quick look, we could quickly have a look at our um, IP address for this machine, which appears to be 192.168.128. And also have a look at my um, Python script and this Python script is about sending uh, a buffer of A's about 2000 bytes long so we're going to be creating a file called playlist.plf and this file will then be uh, opened on the DVD-X 5.5 uh, professional player and hopefully we'll be able to develop an exploit using the uh, SCH buff overflow exploit. So I'm just going to do a quick overview of this exploitation technique. This exploitation technique is quite um, similar to the saved address, uh, return address exploit, which we demonstrated using the SL mail in our previous video. However, in this this technique actually uses the SCH record because the SCH record has got two parts. So we have uh, the SCH handler itself and also the pointer to the next SCH record. So the idea of this exploit is to be able to to overwrite um, both of these records within um, the exception when, except, when an exception is triggered. And so once we overwrite the, the current SCH, we could put in um, an instruction which is a pop-up return instruction that tells the program to jump to the pointer and then we then need to override the pointer as well to tell the pointer to point directly to our shell code so that's how this exploit actually works so once we gain control of these two um, handlers within the SEH record we should be able to trigger our exploit to, to launch the shell code so to begin with I'm just going to create a simple file okay we could search for this file by going in here and search for the file I'm just going to copy this file onto my Windows 7 machine. For some strange reason, um, VMware doesn't allow me to copy directly from my from one VM to the other. The other, so I'm just going to copy this directly to the host machine, and then from the host machine, copy it onto the Windows 7 machine. I'm just going to place it on the desktop here. Right. So once again, um, click try to select the playlist I'm, but I'm not going to open the playlist net yet I'm just going to launch Immunity Debugger and attach the running program to Immunity Debugger so we can have a look at the memory and also have a look at the SCH record once the exception is triggered so I'm going to go directly to select um, the DVD player running <clears throat> and then go ahead to open up the file so straight away an exception is triggered immediately the debugger pauses and then we can have a look here the AIP has been overwritten with with 41 41 41 so a string of A is actually overwritten EIP but because this is not a saved return um, 
address exploit by clicking on alt s on our keyboard we can have a look at the sch record and we can see here that the corrupt entry which actually triggered the exception is actually 41 41 41 so this shows that we do have control of the sch record and we're able to override the sch record which is a good start so what we're going to do here is we're going to generate a um, unique pattern so I'm going to go on to the um, my Kali Linux machine open on a new terminal using pattern create I'm going to generate 2000 unique bytes and then try to find the offset in order to know exactly what location the next four bytes that overrides the uh, ACH record is actually located. So I'm just going to make this bigger. So I'll copy this straight into the Python exploit script. And just change, send this into the buffer. Call this playlist one. So I'll close this image debugger and try to open it up again. Select the file, attach the program to image debugger. Once again, if we have a look here, we can see we got these unique bytes. So this actually shows that we um, 4134 has actually been um, a corrupt entry as well that had actually overwritten the S8 record. So we can invoke Mona and ask Mona to, to look for the offset. So we can use pattern, off, uh, pattern offset. And then supply Mona with the value 41, 34, 75, 41. And have Mona have a look at the, the offset. And we can see from here, just written in red, that the, uh, the offset is actually 612. So the next four bytes after 612 is actually what overrides the SCH uh, record. So what we can do here is we can then go ahead to modify our exploits. Six one two, but because this is actually quite different from the uh, EIP overwrite the EIP in the save address uh, return address exploit I'm just gonna pull up the slide where the where we've got the explanation to this so the SCH has been replaced by the X byte 41347541 and we've been able to locate the offset of the X byte which is 612 however because 
we, we mentioned earlier on that the SCH record actually has two parts, which is the pointer and also the SCH record handler itself. So what our buffer needs to look like is the, 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 the four bytes has to, the overwrites has to, you know, has to go into both of this, um, you know, separate parts of the of the SCH record. So rather than having 6112, what we're going to have is 608. So the next four bytes overwrites the the pointer and also the next set of set of four bytes actually overrides the SCH. So in that case, what we're going to have here is 608 bytes. And then we could put in four bytes just to make sure we, we actually see that we're controlling four bytes there and then we could overwrite our SCH record itself with four C's and then I'm going to include some padding which is the difference between the addition of 608 4 plus 4 and when we take that away from 2000 we're going to have a padding of 1384 so once again I am going to create another playlist file call this playlist 2 this onto the Windows 7 machine and repeat the process of attaching the program to Immunity Debugger. What we will find out here is we'll be able to actually confirm we do actually are able to overwrite the SCH record. So an exception has been triggered again, immunity debugger pauses, then we can have a look at the SCH, and we can see here 43, 43, 43, 43, 43, which is the four bytes of C, which we actually put into our buffer. So we do can confirm now that the, the offset location we got of 608 is actually correct and that four bytes of C actually overrides the SCH record. So that's great news. So what we need to do now is to look for um, a pop-up return instruction and, and select a pop-up uh, return instruction from the DLLs on this app application in order to um, trigger this exploit so you, can, you know the pop-up return jumps to the pointer and then we can replace we can look for another set of instructions to put into the pointer in the SH record. So in order to do this, we're going to back on a Mona again and tell Mona to search. So we're going to do Mona to search for some SH pointers which we can use. So if we, Mona, if we, have, if we have a look at the logs, we can see Mona has actually found 2,954 pointers. And if we look at this, we have um, a list of pointers here. However, we cannot see all of the 2,954 pointers. So, Moon has actually written the you know the list of these pointers into a file called sch.txt. So we can have a look at that sch.txt file. Go to Programs. Go to Immunity in Community Debugger, and we'll find the sch.txt file here. If we open this file, just a text file, and we can see the DLLs with um, memory look, memory protection ASLR true false for each of these DLLs, and we and we also need to make sure we select uh, a DLL which is which ASLR is false and rebase is also false. And we need to make sure that the pop-up return instruction we're going to select does not contain any bad characters okay so 
I've already done this before and I found a very reliable address which I used. I'm just going to search for it real quick here. Okay, so the address, you can select any of these addresses, however, you need to make sure you select an address that doesn't have a return address. So, like the ones here that have got 08080804, they would be, they would not work. If you select any of this one that has a return address, it would not work. So, the pop-up return, which means to select, has to be one that doesn't have a return offset value. So, I'm just going to copy this and replace this in our exploit um, um, script. So we're going to replace our C's with the value which we just um, copied. However, we need to make sure also we're writing this in Little Indian, so we're writing this backwards. Remember, Little Indian, just because we're using um, an Intel processor because Windows is running on Intel processor requires us to write uh, the value in Indian. So I'm just going to write this real quick. Great. So we can generate another playlist file and try to see what happens in the um, in the SH record once again when we send this exploit so I've created the file I'm just gonna copy this straight away again to the Windows 7 lab machine repeat the process of opening up the application and attaching it to the debugger Okay, so we can once again the music bugger crashes and if we have a look at the SCH record we can actually see the value which we actually um, the pop-up return instruction been been sent into the SCH record and that's triggered an exception. So what we need to then do is if we right click on this and follow this in stack on the bottom right corner of the immunity debugger window we can see we've got the the record here the sch handler with the value of the pop-up return address and also we've got the pointer to the next sch so like i said the the the, the sch record actually has two parts so what we need to do here now is if we double click on the pointer here we would see that the distance between the pointer to where we have the bytes of D's is actually eight bytes. You can see a plus eight. So what we're saying is, the pop-up return instruction will jump back to the pointer. We then need to look for an instruction that we can place in the pointer to the next SE record that will allow us jump straight away to to our D's. So we could then put our shell code somewhere where we have our D's. Okay, so. We need to do a short jump over to this uh, location. So I am going to be demonstrating that in the next um, video. Okay.